morning, everybody. We are so glad that you have joined us for our service today. It is going to be a fun and a little different kind of service today. Um, we are going to be hanging our greens and preparing our sanctuary for the season of Advent. If you are online, I encourage you to sign the friendship pad, the virtual friendship pad, or let us know that you're here on Facebook as you join us for worship today. So, now for the instructions. This is like the rehearsal for the wedding. You ready? Everybody has an assignment, or we hope you all have an assignment for um, the service today. So what I need you to do is we're going to go through the items, and I'll tell you where you're going to put it when you are here. So if you, have, if you are bringing in our purple liturgical cloth, then raise your hand. Andra, that's you. <laughs> so you're going to put the purple cloth on the communion table. The next assignment um, is our Advent wreath. Who are our Advent wreath carers? carriers? Um, and so you will bring your Advent wreath and place it in the front of the church. Um, and then who are poinsettia carriers? Those ones I know because it's big purple and Alona, you're also a purple. Well, maybe you could find a friend and they can help you carry it up. So we need three poinsettias. The, the three poinsettias on this side of the church are going to come right in front of the pulpit, and the one poinsettia on this side of the church is going to go right in front of the lectern over there. Then we have our chrismons. Those are the ornaments that are going on the Christmas tree. There are chrismons all throughout the church, so if you have a white, gold, or silver ornament, raise your hand. Perfect. If, so on the screen, there's going to be images of each of those um, items. They all look a little different, so you, if you have a cross and it looks like that cross, then you put it up. Um, some of them are silver, some are gold, like I said, but just do it your best. Come up as soon as that name is read or the image just comes up. I want you to come and put your ornament on the tree. And if you need help, Gordon is there to be your a hanging assistant. And um, if you, at the end of the Christmas, there's going to be singing at the end of each item. You can just come forward if you did not get an ornament. You can, or if you didn't see your picture come up, just come up at the end. Then we have our nativity. Who has all of our nativity pieces? Who has nativity pieces? I think I have more nativity pieces. Okay, good. So you're going to come and put our nativity pieces on the communion table. Um, so at that time, and then we have light, and Gordon's going to turn our light on. We also have a baptism today, so we're really excited about that, and I look forward to having a wonderful service of participation. Does anybody not have something to bring forward and would like to? Now is the time to raise your hand. We'll find you something here in just a minute. Does anybody have something that they cannot bring forward or do wish to change? Okay, I think we're ready for the service to begin. Gordon, can you call us to worship? All who are able, please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come, let us prepare for the Lord. Come to us in the silence and in the song. Come to be with us. And a call to confession, our call is Jesus who loves us unconditionally, forgives us always, and shows us grace each day. Join me in confessing our sins to God and to each other, first together and then silently. So prayer of confession together. Lord Jesus, we have just begun to wait in anticipation of your birth, and we have already put our hope in people, places, and things around us. 
remind us that you are our only hope this Christmas. Change us and open our eyes to the hope found in your birth. Now hear our silent prayers of confession. Amen. The good news of Advent is that Jesus Christ has come into the world. He has led the way through death that we may have life and is coming again to make all things new. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. found in the birth of our Saviour. This peace is given to everyone. Let us share that peace with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Grace and peace be with all of you today. I hope you all have received your Advent bags. They were passed out this past week and hopefully delivered to your homes if you were not here. If you would like an Advent bag or you did not get one, uh, there are some located in the Narthex or you can call the church office and we will get you one delivered to you. We have a few fun things that are happening this coming week. Um, we have our gingerbread um, mission angel tree that we started last week. All I think we have five spots left on our Sign Up Genius online. If you would like an angel still or a gingerbread card and you didn't get one, or you're unsure of how to sign up online, then see Sally and she'll help you after church. Those are all due back next Sunday. To learn a little bit more about it, please turn your attention to the screens to watch our video, our mission video. Thank you, Sally, for all of 
your hard work on this project and for everybody for their gifts last year. Those are pictures from the gifts we purchased and that Southwest put together for us. A few other things that are happening uh, on Wednesday starts our first Vesper services. We're having a service of comfort and joy. It will be a service to uh, remember, celebrate, and to reflect on the things that we have loved and lost and we uh, remember this season. So I hope you join us at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary for that service. Then on Sunday, we are having our Guadalupe Food Bank Drive. Uh, it's also a communion that day. Um, for the drive, they're asking for extra coats and gloves and scarves, so I encourage you to bring those to the Narthex next week. Uh, and then Sunday night, we're going Christmas caroling here in the neighborhood, so I invite you to meet us here at 5.30, right outside in the courtyard. We'll go caroling in the neighborhood, and then come back and have cookies and hot chocolate and and lots of fellowship, so we'll see you then. And just to save the date, we're having our Advent Festival for families on uh, December 11th, and so we hope to see you outside. We're gonna have fun activities and fellowship time, and uh, we have a delicious brunch that Colleen is putting together. So we'll look forward to seeing you all then. I think that's all of our announcements, so I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for our children's sermon. Good morning, everybody. It's really good to be with you all today. Can you guys go down here so I can see all of your faces? Ella, can you guys go down here? So I have a question for you today. Do any of you, have any of you guys started decorating for Christmas yet? Yes. yes. Is all of the decorations up in your house? No? Yes? And what is your favorite decoration? Can someone share me about what their favorite decoration is? Yeah, what's your favorite decoration? The Christmas tree. The Christmas tree? I like the Christmas tree too. What's your favorite? The countdown for Christmas. The countdown for Christmas. Ooh. And how many days until Christmas do you know? 29. What's your favorite? Elsa. Okay. Elsa? Who else has a favorite? Anybody? Well, today we're going to be decorating. Oh, you, you're going to share another one? Elf on the Shelf. Ooh. Elf on the Shelf. Does Elf on the Shelf do lots of funny things at your house? Yeah. Yes? Well, today we're going to be decorating the sanctuary for Christmas. If you can see, there's a Christmas tree up already. But all of the other items we have to decorate with are in the pews. And so we're going to need your help. Do you guys all have an assignment to bring forward? Yes? Good. Well, I have a special activity for you to do during church, too. Because I thought that you might like to decorate the church in this picture with some stickers. Do you think you could do that for me? And if you do that, we have prizes in the back. Okay? So we're gonna pass these out, and then maybe Ella could help me. Can someone, can you come help me? Come on. Come on, Madison, come on. You can help me. Can one of you pass out the sticker bag? Everybody gets a bag, and everyone gets a piece of paper. Can I hold one, though? Okay, thank you. So in this bag is Do you have enough? I have more. Two more? There you go. Okay, so in this bag is a purple cloth that you're supposed to put on the table. There you go. And there is poinsettias that you're supposed to put on the, in the room. There's an advent wreath and a nativity set and 
some little lights and some ornaments to put on the Christmas tree. So I want you to try and put all of those on when we put them on during church, okay? Think you can do it? Yeah. And then there's coloring on the back. Okay? Can we say a prayer together? Okay. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Thank, you thank you for Christmas decorations, Christmas decorations. that help us Prepare for your birth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Come on, let's go back to your seats. During the Advent season, we prepare for the one who has come, whom we expect to come, and who will come again. We prepare our hearts and make room for the Messiah. In the hanging of the greens, we share with Christians throughout the ages the memory and anticipation of Christ's coming. We decorate our church in purple to remind us that our King was born on that night. He is God with us.
This simple circle of evergreen branches testifies of the continuation of life and life without end. The four candles encircle the Christ candle to signify God's Son as the light of the world. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent. Each Sunday we will light a candle and on Christmas Eve the Christ candle will be lit. With increasing brightness from the candles, we experience the light of the world and find hope in the coming of Jesus. represents health and wellness for all people on earth. I hope for peace with no fighting. I hope that each one of us here will be able to uplift and bring joy to one person that we haven't done so before. My hope is for all our families to be together. We like this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that God meets us in the midst of our days. Hope that God still sees us. Hope that God will guide us to this Christmas.
or flower of the holy night, as the plant is referred to in Mexico, is the most popular Advent flower. It was discovered growing wild in Mexico and is taken to North America where it was developed into the type of flower seen there today. The star-shaped center of the bloom reminds us of the star that shone on that first Christmas. has three steps at the bottom of the cross that symbolize faith, hope, and love. The Irish or Celtic cross is a normal cross with a circle in the middle that symbolizes eternity. The triumphant cross represents the earth with a cross on top. It symbolizes Jesus is triumphant over anything we can face in the world. The anchor cross reminds Christians that Jesus is the anchor of our faith. The IHS cross are the first three letters of the Jesus in Greek. It has been used to represent Jesus from the third century. The fish is one of the oldest Christian symbols. The letters from the Greek word for fish, which stand for Jesus, Christ, God, Son, and Savior. Some of Jesus' disciples were fishermen. Alpha and Omega are the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. Used together, they symbolize that Christians believe Jesus is the beginning and the end of all things. The chi rho are the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. Greek word Christos, which means Christ. 
The star of David is a symbol that Jesus was a Jew and a descendant of King David. A five-pointed star represents the five wounds of Jesus on the cross. The nativity star is the symbol of the star of Bethlehem when the wise men visited Jesus. The eight-pointed star represents baptism and regeneration. The crown is the symbol that Jesus is king. It shows that Christians believe Jesus is ruler over something in here, heaven, and on earth. The dove is a symbol of peace and the Holy Spirit. It is shown pointing down to represent the Holy Spirit that appeared as a dove when Jesus was baptized. The candle represents that Christians believe Jesus is the light of the world. The chalice is a symbol of communion. It also represents God's forgiveness. The angel reminds Christians of the angels who told the shepherds about the birth of Jesus. It can also represent the second coming of Jesus. The manger represents Jesus as a baby at Christmas. The Triquerta represents the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is made up of three loops, making a triangle, representing the three parts of the Trinity. The Lamb is a symbol for Jesus, who is called the Lamb of God.
symbols of darkness and light. We believe Jesus is the light of the world. At his birth, light began to fill the darkness of fear, loneliness, grief, and hardship that brings the presence of God with us. The light brings brightness to hope, joy, love, and peace that invites the energy of God's life into our world. We put up Christmas tree lights, put candles in our windows, and decorate our yards with light to remember that God's light shines brightly in the darkness. <laughs> scripture reading this morning is Psalm 46 for the director of music of the sons of Korah according to Alamoth a song God is a refuge and strength an ever present help in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this day, for the decorations, for the busyness, and for the quiet that's found in you. Guide us back to that as we hear your word today. Amen. 
This psalm tells of two worlds. A world outside where chaos is imagined in earthquakes and tsunamis and political turmoil and warfare and maybe a little bit of the craziness of decorating for Christmas. And an internal world where God's presence and protective power banish all turmoil, where we can be so still that we can hear ourselves think and be ready for what God will bring for us that day. Advent is a lot like this, and in fact, we so rarely hear this psalm sung at, in Advent season. Usually it's sung throughout other parts of the year. But I find that it fits so well with what I hope for in Advent, or what I think Advent should look like. I always want my Advent to be filled with the hope, peace, joy, and love, for everything to be calm and bright and wonderful, and for everything to work out just the way it's supposed to. Sort of like the service today. I hoped everything would go exactly as it's supposed to. But Advent is so rarely worked out in the perfection of these activities. In fact, in Jesus' day, Christmas started in the chaos of a census with a murderous dictator and a birth in a barn. Nothing seemed to go right for them that Christmas. And today, our Christmases are filled with continued COVID outbreaks, griefs beyond our explanations, challenges at home, in our culture, in our society, and if we looked at the tsunamis of our world, it would feel like chaos. But I think maybe Psalm 46 has a strategy for us this Advent, a song that we can still sing of the stillness, of the drop of chaos, of the quiet that happens in the midst of our busy, crazy Advent seasons. An opportunity to teach us that around the chaos and in the midst of the chaos, we can still feel the silence of Christ. The expectation in the midst of despair, the joy in the midst of our own suffering, the desire in the midst of anger, all filled in one single story. An opportunity to just be with God. It doesn't take much. In fact, this psalm says nothing but being still for one single second. To know that God is the one who is coming. God is the one who stops all and ends all and is a part of all. Even when it feels like chaos is happening all around us. So let's have a single moment of silence now. And just let Christ be with us here in this place. Amen. And in this silence, we get to celebrate something beautiful. Something that God gifted to us in the midst of his life in baptism. So today we get to baptize McKinley. And so I'd like to invite the family to come forward as we get ready. Hear these words from Jesus. This is yours. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And from Galatians, as many of you were baptized in Christ and have enclosed yourself in Christ, there is no longer a Jew nor a Greek. Slave nor free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ. And from the book of Acts, this promise is for you, for your children and for all those far away, everyone whom the Lord
your calls. On behalf of the session, I present McKinley Constant Smith, child of Elizabeth and Glenn, to be baptized. Standing with the family is Fabian Chavez and Christina Loren. What Jesus told his disciples to do, we seek faithfully and joyfully to do today. Through baptism, we acknowledge that God calls all of us precious. We know the reality of the forgiveness of our sins and the price that Christ paid for that forgiveness. We affirm that we are heirs to the promise of eternal life, and we accept our place in the church as the body of Christ. The promises that are ours also belong to our children. They are within God's covenant and a part of God's family. Little children cannot understand these things, but we know that God calls the church to teach, to love, to carefully discipline them into this understanding. Therefore, Christian parents are asked to affirm their faith and commitment themselves to this challenge, depending all the while on God. Elizabeth and Glenn, in presenting your child for baptism, you announce your faith in Christ and show that you want to study him, know him, and serve him, and you also want this for your children. Do you promise, with God's help and ours, to bring up your child as Christians? Do you promise to teach them about the word and example and what it means, to help them renounce evil and embrace the redeeming love of Christ, to pray for them and with them, and to live in hope that one day, in their own accord, they also confess Jesus Christ as their Savior? If so, please answer, we do. Madison and Kennedy, I have a question for you. Do you promise to be really good big sisters? To love and guide and teach McKinley all about Jesus? Yes? Yes? <laughs> and Elsa. It's a good thing to have Elsa too. And Fabian and Christina, will you promise to support and guide and be there for McKinley and her faith life? Excellent. Now we'll now ask the willingness of our congregation to also follow this holy obligation. Please rise. Do we, the people of the church, promise to tell McKinley the good news of the gospel, to help her know all that Christ commands, and by your fellowship, to strengthen their ties with the household of God? If so, please answer, we do. We do. Please join me in reaffirming our own baptismal vows. On the slide, next slide, there you go. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, God us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Baptism water is good. <laughs> Let us pray together. Lord, we give you thanks for the nourishing and sustaining life of water. In the beginning, you moved in this water. You brought forth life in it. And in the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And in his life and death, we are set free and given eternal life. We thank you for these waters of baptism. For through them, we are reborn in the powers of the Holy Spirit. Send your Holy Spirit into this water so that it may be a fountain of, re of, of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away all sins and cleanse us. Raise us to new life. And Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on McKinley so that she may have the power of yours to trust you in every situation and to live in Christ. 
You ready to put your hands in the water? Put your hands in there. Stick your hands in there. What do you think? Does it feel pretty good? It's a little cold, huh? Elizabeth and Glenn, do you desire for your child to be baptized? If so, say we do. Can I hold you? What do you think? Are you ready? McKinley, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. McKinley, you are a child of the covenant, sealed in Christ's blood, and known in the Holy Spirit, and marked as his own forever. Amen. You want to go back to mom? <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for calling us in your life and to be reborn in you. Praise you for the gifts of your spirit upon McKinley, so that she may always know your presence, be guided by your word, and grow in your faith and love for you. We ask for your guidance for Elizabeth, Glenn, Fabian and Christina, along with their family as they guide, teach, and raise McKinley in your faith. And help us all to know your truths. Amen. Friends, join me in welcoming McKinley Constance into Christ's covenant, into our family. This week, through the prayer chain, include prayers for Nicole, Cynthia Giroux's daughter-in-law, who has COVID. She's finally out of the hospital and is recovering at home. Prayers for Tom and Marilyn, the Clark's sons-in-law, who both have COVID. For Kathleen, Cynthia Giroux's daughter, who badly broke her elbow and is recovering from... Not daughter. Did I say daughter? I meant sister who badly broke her elbow and is recovering from surgery, Kathy Alacier, who has valley fever, and for uh, 
Hunter Wyman's family who died last weekend, Leanna Owens, uh, who's a friend of Tina Brown, Leanna Owens, who is a college friend of Tina's who was killed in the Christmas parade in Wakuska, Wisconsin last Sunday, um, and also prayers for Anne, a friend of Tina Brown who died this past week. Prayers from the Thanksgivings from the Grants who give Thanksgiving that Duncan is uh, is better and is back to work and that no one else in their house got sick. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. Jesus, we long for the simple sounds of Christmas, for all the familiar melodies, the words, the symbols that remind us of the great miracles of who made all things come into being, and also who came in one night as a babe to lie in his mother's arms. Lord, we continue this Advent season negotiating a virus, the differences out of very challenging similarities and the challenges of being together and being safe. And yet in the same longing bubbles up inside of us, the yearning to be present with you as we celebrate and we expect the coming of your son. Lord, be with all those who are in need of your care this season. Those named above, those set in our hearts, silent be. We pray, O oh Lord, that in the days leading ahead, that as the comfort of your sound, of your voice, draws closer to us, as we get closer to the day of Christmas, whenever we lose our footing or things feel out of control, when the grief becomes too great to bear, that we're guided back by the sound of your voice, showing us the loving and gracious kindness of you, birth as a baby. And when it feels overwhelming, return us to the words that you taught your disciples to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During Advent, we celebrate the why when it comes to giving of our time, talents, and treasures. We give because God sends the world a Messiah to save us. In response, we say thank you. Please join me in giving through our online giving webpage found in the link or QR code.
to save us. Thank you for the blessings you give to us. Please use these gifts for your glory and purpose to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Christmas is not just about all the decorations, although they are pretty great. It's about why we put up the decorations, to remind us and lead us back to those that hope, the peace, the joy, and the love found at Christmas. So I hope your houses are filled with decorations that also help prepare you for this season. And blessings on this Advent. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. May the love of God the Father surround you. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. And if you haven't had your picture taken, Mark will be outside to have your photo taken for the directory. <laughs> 